Coming up, 16 Aussies have competed in the Karate One circuit around the world in this past month and a half, and we're here to break down each event. There is a brand new partnership with Fox Sports Australia. The highest level of karate is now being brought to the big screens at home. Uh, more and more athletes and parents are now understanding the reality of competing overseas, and we're here to shine a light on what that really means. And we also share some things that we wish we knew before tackling the international circuit, but you've got to stick around to the end to hear that. All that follows after our talented friend, Good Fortune. You really got lucky there, John. I'm not Very mad. Lucky. I'm not mad. I'm just really disappointed. <laughs> Look, I had a bit of performance anxiety this morning. And <laughs> triangle got left at home. But you've got it. And I've you've been practicing? It cost me $5. Okay. So. <laughs> <laughs> I, I want to see it next time. Okay. Okay. Actually, no, if I think we need some encouragement from the people. So please, if you want to see John with the triangle, the $5 triangle, you've got to put it in the comments. You've got to give him some love. He needs some encouragement. Yeah, I'll do it for the people. I'm not going to do it for you guys. Hey, fair enough. You know what? I think we should ask for proof as well of practice. I think Kaizen Culture should do like a story okay. of you practicing. Oh, I want to see that proof. We could do our first like garage band practice where we each get a triangle. I'm not, I'm no, not, I'm not jumping. Jumping. <laughs> That's all you, mate. Oh, my goodness. You oh. dug yourself that grave. <laughs> Um, welcome back to the Kaizen Culture Pod. I'm your host, Mitchell Durham, alongside John Stainer and Nathan Blockley. We are free and available wherever you get your podcasts, whether it's Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or something other crazy domain you can listen to your podcast. I'm sure we're on it. Uh, we're also over on YouTube, so head over there, watch us on, on YouTube, like and subscribe. And if you're enjoying the content, it would mean the world if you could drop us a rating. Hopefully it's five stars. And as always, please let us know your thoughts and opinions. Send us an email at kaizenculture.info at gmail.com or even go to our website and sign up to our mailing list, kaizenculture.org. So, yeah, I mean, the, the email list is, is out now and we're full running for the year. So I think uh, if you can jump on board and, and find out things that, you know, the social media doesn't get to, to see first, um, the email list is gets priority um, and just we want to try and send out as much information through that as possible. So we've been see, uh, receiving so many good feedback from parents and, and athletes and we're hearing your questions. So we're trying our best to answer them. I'm loving that email list at the moment because it's like it's important to deliver content through socials, obviously, but I feel like the, the engagement we get from the email list that's going to be the way forward. So with the Karate One event news that's been a recent addition with the K1 in Antalya, you know, all of our email list subscribers got a whole breakdown of when the Aussie athletes are going to be on. It's split up into time zones as well, so you know exactly when to watch it and we'll get into it later that it was on Fox Sports. And then also a, a breakdown of the results afterwards as well so i think it's been very valuable and we've got a lot of great feedback on that so podcast is fantastic watch parties are awesome but the engagement comes it's it's all sort of like one one sided with this stuff like we can get feedback with the email list and uh, like emails coming in but with the email list that's where it's really collaborative so i'm loving that at the moment awesome well yeah we've had a huge month and a half um especially on the international circuit. So we've had three Karate One events, all all three levels. So from the Premier League to the Series A and then to the Youth League. So the first one that we had was in the Series A in uh, Larnaca. So I kind of got it right this time. <laughs> um, yeah, and we had Sean and Ahmed compete there, uh, the, our Sydney representatives. Uh, and the Series A, I think we should talk about how it's just a massive, massive event. Huge. Like, what's up with that? They've got, like, hundreds of competitors. I can't remember a tournament with so many competitors. I mean, the male card had a full 128 competitors. 120. 
That is insane. And uh, I think there were like two divisions with less than 100 people. <laughs> That's crazy. Hey? Yeah. That's you a get, lot. Get your value for going over though, especially if you can make it through a couple of rounds. I think, yeah, the, the Carters, the finals were like their sixth and seventh Carter. Yeah. Are yeah. they doing the new rules where you don't have to repeat or you can repeat on the fifth one? Yeah, you so you, um, six, I think you said you're only five. required to know five carters. Five, yeah. So whether you do five That's rounds great. and then you can No repeat. one's pulling out Gigasai to <laughs> in the final. <laughs> yeah. So it was, it was, yeah, five carters and then your sixth carter, as long as it's not your fifth carter. You can repeat. You can repeat it. So oh. it has to be one of the, your first four. Uh, but then your finals, if you do get a seventh card, that can be your fifth card. You just can't repeat cards. Back to back. I think yeah, that's a great change. Like mm. if you're getting that far through, like five is a lot to prepare to that standard. Well, you, I mean, we did Carter obviously, but only the national level. Like we did, we did one Premier League at Carter just to jump in there. But it was so fun. It was that. fun. But yeah, we didn't really push, you know, we, and we didn't have the system of training Carter. You know, um, I think I had one event. I had to do six, and I was open. Wow. I think I was one of the unlucky people that didn't get a bye and then pulled out Sanchin in the semi-final. <laughs> so I was going to lose that one. It was against James. Oh, okay. Fair enough. So, James had that wrapped up. Yeah. What is it? Two, four, eight, 16, 32. So it was, it was over 32 competitors. Yeah, like you might get a sixth round. 36, yeah. yeah. Wow. That's, and, then, yeah. and that was at a nationals. Aussie Open. I was open, I think. Yeah. Crazy numbers. Hey. Yeah. But you're, you're right, Mitch, we've had a huge month and a half for karate. And it's so good to see so many athletes in the financial position to make that sort of trip work for them. Um, although some of them may not have found the results they've seen, that's that's the reps that you have to put in on this international stage to get to where you want to be. You know, gone are the days where you can just compete at nationals, get selected, and the Australian team go to Worlds and win it. Yeah. You know, it, it did yeah. happen at... You know, there was a period of time where that was enough, but now you have to be on the international stage consistently to perform on the international stage. I yeah. mean, it makes sense, doesn't it? I think people, our competition is competing so regularly and that's always been the case, you know, so you've got to match that somehow and you've just got to, like you said, get the reps in. Um, but we've actually got some a pretty cool thing to bring to this episode we've got an athlete experience a little anecdote from someone so Ahmed has been so generous to uh put some thought and time into sending in his thoughts about his experience in in Lanaka and um sorry Lanaka I'm, I'm not <laughs> I, gonna I didn't pick it up yeah I'm not gonna be able to get it eh? it's just in my brain just La Lanaka anyway okay um but yeah so Ahmed is says sent his little voice memo in so I want to play that now for you boys if that's all right yeah great. fantastic sweet Hey boys, thanks for giving me this opportunity to share my uh, experience in Larnaca in the Series A. It was very eventful. I got to hang out with none other than the champ himself, Sean Ewan. Uh, it was very interesting for us to see how the judges and the referees were scoring uh, the cutter and what we needed to work on. But uh, nonetheless, we saw how close we are as athletes that train here uh, to Japanese and uh, European athletes, and it wasn't very far. It wasn't very far. We are so blessed to have uh, such an experienced uh, group of coaches that help us to achieve this level. I'm very happy to represent Iraq, especially that I'm based in Australia. I can go everywhere so easily, and not a lot of uh, athletes get the chance to represent that country, and as you see, uh, not a lot of athletes do. So I'm very uh, grateful for the opportunity to have uh, most of the Australian team helping me and pushing me to be so much better. And uh, obviously all my thanks will go to everyone that ever helped me. And uh, I hope that I can uh, put Iraq and Australia as well uh, further and further through uh, in the discipline of Qatar. Going to this competition, I have two goals. Uh, Winning, obviously, is goal number one, but that didn't work. Goal number two was to show that uh, Iraq and Australia have very good level comparing to the world, especially in the space of Qatar, which is dominated by Japanese athletes, mostly. Uh, so I was hoping that I could have done a good job there, better than what I did, but uh, I guess you have to keep going and you have to keep competing and for the judges to know you, for them to give you more points and 
you go through more rounds. Now going to uh, the competition and competing against very high level athletes, uh, I wasn't phased at all to be honest. To be quite honest, I, I was ready to take on the world because of the level of competition we have here in Australia. We have such a high level. Uh, mentioning some names, Sean Newham, Isaac Hoshi, Harrison Knight, uh, Andy, we all have very good cutter and uh, we all push each other to uh, achieve higher levels and I hope that uh, one day we can uh, compete and win against the Japanese. And that's what made me uh, very comfortable going against uh, such high level athletes. I wasn't faced. Uh, I do have a Series A in Salzburg in Austria uh, in September and there is a very very good chance of me going to uh, Asian Karate Championships to represent Iraq and that will give me so much more points I'll be able to do Premier League hopefully and if that happens I'll be extremely lucky Wicked Yeah I, um, I sent Ahmed a few questions just probing him to ask about you know his experience and uh, you know what it was like preparing for the comp and um, how did he feel going up against the best in the world and all that sort of stuff. So that's a bit of cool insight to see from from Ahmed and his perspective. So thank you so much, mate. I really appreciate. It. So good to have another voice on this yeah. podcast for everyone. Um, I really liked what he was saying at the beginning about you go there and he did say maybe he didn't quite get what he wanted, but there's so much insight you get from seeing the other competitors. What are people doing with their carters? What are the judges looking for, scoring for? You can take back and work on. Seems like he's got some great targets with a another Series A and hopefully the Asian is it Cup or Games? I think Asian Championships. Asian Championships. Yeah. Um, so he's got those things to aim for and hopefully this experience is going to be really good for building on that. For sure. It's great to hear that he was confident going into the comp as well from its experiences in Australia because we do have some very high quality athletes here in Australia. So that giving him the confidence to perform on the international level, that's great to hear. Mm. No Dylan Fisher though. Yeah, no mention for the Dills. Oh, yeah. I was thinking that. National and, champion. And, and WA, also, snub. WA, yeah, like, I mean, it's a WA-based podcast, but I'm just saying, like, <laughs> you didn't mention Dylan or oh, Ahmed. No, nah, it's all good. Yeah, yeah. No, but it, it, it's great to know that our athletes going overseas are getting the confidence from Australian competitions because I think that's very important because that's – that's the gap that's existed for so many years is you compete in Australia and then you go into the international stage and it's like a completely different level, you know? Mm -hmm. So I'm glad that that gap, that bridge is, oh, that gap is being bridged. Yeah. Yeah. Right. <laughs> no, thanks. We really appreciate that. And uh, maybe we'll, we'll look to get a few more athlete experiences throughout the year. So if you, if you feel comfortable jumping on and talking about your experience, um, I think we'd love to have you. Mm. And yeah, the Asian Championships as well. That's fantastic. That'll Huge. be such a good event for him. Yes. Mm. You know, it's such a high quality event. Mm. Um, anything else we want to talk about with, with Lanika? I'm happy to move on. Yeah. I think you got it right. I think Lanika is the, yeah, I've, I've, it was a conscious decision. <laughs> I had to think about the words before I speak, which is not usually my strong suit. <laughs> I'm just Speaking glad that thinking. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so, yeah, next is the, the Youth League in Fajara, so the UAE. Uh, we had 12 juniors attend, which is crazy. We That's a about, standout yeah. for sure. I don't think I've ever seen a, a number like that. No, and it was unorganised as well. You know, we I think we've had a couple of organised Australian teams going over to these youth leagues in the past, and it's been, you know, around the 10 competitor mark. But 12 athletes who haven't gone through that channel of – going through the Australia and then registering through Karate Australia, that's fantastic to see. Yeah, I mean, there's obviously a demand there. There's some coaches, I think, pushed it quite a bit within their clubs. But like you're saying, if 12 are going without the official, that's mm. something really to think about I maybe feel like, for next year. Yeah, the youth leagues have always sort of haven't got the respect that they sort of deserve from coaches, I feel like, as in importance-wise, you know. It's always been about the Premier Leagues. And the youth leagues, they're so important to the development of an athlete. And so far, well, how I can think of in the history, most athletes go up and they're already a senior before they go into the international stage. So see, <clears throat> sorry, uh, seeing that, 
from a junior level, that's so important. Yeah. Well, we had um, we had some good performances. You know, we had quite a few athletes get through a couple of rounds, which is always great to see. You know, it's it's tough when you do your first international competition and um, it, at that level, it's sometimes quite daunting, and that plays a big factor into you know your performance and you know you might not make it through the first round just because of that experience alone. Uh, but we had a few young ones get through a round or so, and then the standout was was James Simone. Uh, he won a couple of rounds and ended up a ninth place. Fantastic! So that's what an experience. So good, incredible. So so good. Um, but yeah, the it looked like from what I saw from the videos that the kids looked comfortable out there. You know, there was no one like, oh my gosh, deer in headlights. Um, so that's huge, and that just shows how mature these these kids are coming through now but it wasn't live live streamed um oh no i just saw like videos from yeah, yeah. someone's no it was Facebook more, more just a talking yeah. point like because the youth league in venice the last youth league i believe that yeah. was that was live streamed all oh, right the full six mats of it the whole and that was a huge tournament with like a thousand plus competitors mm. why wasn't this one not sure. live streamed yeah you know? i would have loved to see a live stream of a youth league but nothing wow Come on, WKF. Yeah, what is come this? on, WKF. We're, we are entering into the, the media territory and we are getting bigger and better things, so you've got to start with streaming everything, right? Mm. Um, I think a special mention for the, the New Zealanders that performed, the Cutter Boys, um, I think the, the Ling brothers, they got – I think one of them got second in junior Cutter. So good. Josiah, I think Josiah Ling. And then um, the other one got seventh or something like that. That's wild. That right? is wild. And I think, like, the results 100% matter. But I think more important is just the reps that you get from mm. that sort of competition with that number of competitors and how they're all high level. James Simone getting four fights, fantastic. And these these Ling brothers, I assume, getting quite a few rounds yeah. in that. That's such good experience, mm. you know. We had, um, we had a few people... Um, send in their feedback from this this event, and we were talking about how this is a, a non Australian karate uh, karate Australia run event um, organised by the team. Uh, so this was all the parents and the coaches and athletes organising it on their own. And you know we we know about these experiences; we've done them as as a, as a senior. Uh, but some of these parents and athletes don't know the difference, or there was no difference between just going away with the team and doing it all by yourself. And so we had a couple of people write in and just say, we were so starstruck by the whole process, um, registration, weigh in, no team unity because you know, you're know you not you're jumping on a bus together and it's all just organized by yourself. So it's, it's awesome. Thank you so much for people that wrote in and letting us know what you guys are experiencing because well, I don't really, we've never heard this before. Um, so, but yeah, it's it's tough. like. When you go away by yourself and you're not organised by the by Karate Australia, it's a completely new experience. Absolutely, I think you see why like teams when there is they send like a team manager and there's a whole dedicated team to making sure you're getting to the right place. You know when the registration is, even if you were on top of that, I can imagine it's daunting, and you knew when the times were and you rock up and there's so many different people and am I at the right desk? Am I going to the right place? Um, probably nervous kids around with a youth league as mm -hmm. well. Um, you just don't even know who to talk to, first of all, because you think to yourself, well, I've got to register. I don't know who is in charge of that, you know, and it, it, sometimes you don't know. Like it's, it's good now because I've been around and I've seen the, the same athletes and the same coaches and so you can just sort of go and ask a question to someone. But if it's your first time and you're a parent and you're trying to sort the best out for your kid, you're just like, what is going on? Yeah, no, like that, that that's the feedback I got as well. So mm. I talked to a couple of parents and they said just as simple as not having an Australian tracksuit on or nothing that says Australia flag and the the regist registering people having to work out where you're from, like are you Australia or are you your club and that sort of whole process when they don't probably like clearly know exactly who they're representing. You know, that's that's a really tough process. So... And then a lot of other countries, they were there as countries. They were national teams, so it was a lot more organised. And you just, they went up. They said, "Here's my list of competitors. Bang, you're done. You're out." Whereas our Australian athletes, they didn't have that sort of 
cohesive team going over. Mm. And that's it's it's quite difficult to navigate because we had two national coaches there and we had, uh, I believe all of the Australian athletes are also part of the Australian team, but they were representing their club. So it's a really hard to navigate space because obviously you've got clubs going over and those clubs coaches want to have sole input into how their athlete prepares for the tournament and then executes the tournament. In terms of training beforehand, do you organise that sort of national group to go for a training session to sort of get into the head space to compete on the international stage? Or do you leave it up to the clubs? Like what sort of support is expected mm. from our national federation to these clubs going over? Because it's a massive investment for these guys. And to go over and not know exactly what to do, especially as a parent, where you don't really even understand the process. Like at a, at a basis, there should be a checklist of, all right, there's registration, there's weigh-in. This is what you need to do for all of these different parts of the tournament to get the athlete ready for their performance because mm-hmm. that stress can impact a, a, an athlete for sure. Oh, yeah. you know, And that's a huge responsibility for a parent to have to do all of that, mm-hmm. including just registering even... Here in Australia, I'm, Sport Data isn't the the best platform. It's a fantastic platform, and it's been the one that we've had for the past ever. Ever, <laughs> <laughs> you can kind of tell. Yeah. Yeah. You can kind of tell. Um, but it's still hard to navigate and that whole process. So, mm. um, I I know athletes who think that they can't go to youth leagues because they're not in the national squad and they don't know that Sport Data allows you to register as a club. Mm. so all of that it's, information it's not just unique to this like i always get feedback from lower level of, of like competitors it's sometimes confusing even trying to like what can you do at a state level going to the australian open like we don't as a sport have very clear like documentation and i think it's building but it's something that we can really make clearer just across the board of what's available what's a pathway what's the next step um, I know we've been talking about some of that stuff, so hopefully yeah. that's been helping people. If you were one of those kids, Mitch, who went over to Larnaca. That's good. Yes, thank you. Yep. Well done. I wanted recognition yeah, for that. Yeah, yeah. That's <laughs> that big... was actually sort of natural as well. Yeah, you too was, hard. Anyway. <laughs> I don't know. Um, <laughs> if, you, if you were one of those kids who went over to mm. Larnaca, what would you want from your national federation, given that you were over there as mm. a club and you had your personal coach over there? Yeah, interesting, interesting. Um <sighs> I'm a very team orientated person. So I think I thrive when there's a team around me and I've got mates and support and you feel like you're, you know, you're not by yourself. Some people like to be by themselves, you know. Um, and if my personal coach was over there with me, you know, I've, I've got full faith in my personal coach, you know, and I trust the process because um, of the experience that he's had. And, um, but at the end of the day, I think being with that team would be a, a nice priority. But when I was younger, I didn't really know any different, I don't think. Now that I know what I like and now that I've been through being alone and being in a team, um, I can decide which one I like. And But when I was a kid, I just went with the flow, you yeah. know. And then especially if you didn't have a personal coach who attended. Oh, it's just a parent. You know, just right? a parent to That's, do all of that sort of stuff. Yeah. That's hard. That would have been very, very tough. And mm-hmm. I don't think I really went away as a, as a young kid without a team. So without your personal without coach. A personal coach. So it was either with the team or with the personal coach. So didn't really know anything different. So this is a pretty pretty huge um Great experience. to see they're doing it. Yeah. But yeah, it's it's a tough, mm. tough gig. It's but- a it's a delicate situation, I think, if they've not officially sent an organized team mm. to then you don't wanna step on anyone's toes, like a lot of people have like put mm. good time into that. But maybe they can look at officially sending a team to this sort of thing because it, there was so much interest, there might be even more interest. Yeah. It's uh, something we can uh, talk about in more depth, but we've got to take a little break because the time is about to run out on this thing. Uh, and we'll come back and we'll chat about the rest of it. Cool. Okay. All right. Welcome back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you always do it. Sorry, hey, I don't know I if you want to do it. Lives, no, you can yeah. do it. When do I get a term? Welcome, <laughs> welcome back. <laughs> welcome back, guys. Uh, I believe we're going to hear about the Karate One Premier League in Antalya now. So that was the third competition that's happened in the past month and a half from Australia. And we had Mitch and Hannah represent Australia. 
Fantastic. And let's hear about it, Mitch. What yeah. was it like? It's good. I mean, first one for the year for both of us. Um, we missed out on Paris and, um, you know, always the first one of the year after a bit of a break is, you know, is comes with its own struggles. Um, but yeah, no, it was good. It was, um, it's always good to travel with Hannah and, and, and Brian. Um, yeah, for, for me personally, I wanted to do a few new things and try out a couple of new strategies and just try and get better. Um, obviously I didn't do as great as I wanted to do in terms of getting it out of the pool. I uh, lost two fights, one against Portugal, um, but it wasn't enough to get through. Um, but yeah, it's, I'm feeling, feeling the push and getting better on the, at that level, which I think is important. And Hannah, you know, it's the same, same situation. So just trying to get better and, and performing a little bit better each time. Um, but yeah, it was, there was nothing crazy for, in terms of our performances personally. Um, it's always good traveling with each other though. It's, it helps. We, we've got a good system going down and, you know, we, we help each other out with registration and weighing and all that sort of stuff, hanging out for dinners and touching on what we're talking about before with the, with the youth league is that we're really quite connected, which is nice. You know, you need that, you need that support when you're going all that way by yourself. Um, that's also the reps that we were talking about with Ahmed. It's just going over there, getting reps, trying new things because they're different fighters over there. They're different referees as well. Mm-hmm. Um, that's been quite a common feedback from parents and, and athletes. I mean, Ahmed said it, that you go over and you you learn what you need to do for these referees. So maybe there's a bit of a referee difference between what we have in Australia and what we have internationally. Obviously, we have the very high level refs here in Australia, but maybe there's a gap and some things are getting scored where they don't get scored. Maybe they're just getting the used international to seeing you, search. right? Yeah. yeah. Well, is that a thing? Oh, for sure. 100%. I yeah. think so. Yeah, I think over time, I think as referees have seen me more, they they know what I'm about, I think. This is just a personal experience, obviously. I can't talk on anyone else, but I think that over time, as they see me compete, they go, oh, this guy from Australia, like I know what his deal is. He likes to do this. And then when I see it, oh, I remember that from last time. I think it was just human experience. I think yeah. it's just... Yeah, it's a subconscious thing. Yeah. It's not like they're purposefully making that decision. Oh, I know I like this guy this now. Guy. I'll vote for him. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's a subconscious thing, right? Um, but yeah, aside from the competition, it was actually a really, really cool experience that I got asked to... Um, I, got, I got suggested to jump on to the commentary for the, the finals, which was an insane experience. And the stars aligned as well with the Fox Sports deal. Yeah, so it debuted does, on Fox Sports. That's pretty big. Yeah, I think it, like they realised what had happened. So I think, you know, when they said, oh, do you want to do the commentary? I was like, oh, yeah, that'd be cool. And they said, actually, it works out perfect because now we've got a brand new Fox Sport Australia deal. So we talked about that with Billy. And uh, actually, funny story, Billy Brennan has the strongest handshake in the world. He crushed my hand. But it's not a bad handshake. He doesn't grab your fingers. No, no, it's a solid <laughs> handshake. Like... No, it's a solid. But the thing is, yeah. is like the week before I was fighting, training with Willem and we clashed hands and I think I've broken something. I don't know, but it, it hurts. And it, when he shook my hand, you can't go, ow, you can't do that. He was asserting his dominance. I've been doing this a long time. He's like, here, listen, here, son, this is my job. <laughs> Don't do you take a step over? And I'm like, he's squeezing my place. hand and my hand is in so much pain. I'm just like, oh my gosh. And for the day after that, I just couldn't move my hand. Yeah, it was it was so really Do bad. not shake Billy's hand before you compete. Yeah. No, no way. But he's a uh, great, great guy. He's so good. He's passionate about his job, very experienced. And um it was it was wicked to jump on and uh have a chat with him and help him yeah, out. Especially because he's been the our commentary person on with international karate for years and years, pretty much from the start. Yeah. So it's fantastic that you, you see that commentary on the international stage because there was a time where that didn't exist, mm. you know? He's the Dennis committee. <laughs> 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 um, but, yeah, that, that leads into our Fox Sport um, Australia agreement. So the WKF have signed a, a deal with uh, Fox Sport Australia and it brings all of the finals for Karate 1 to uh, from seniors just right it's just senior events for the premier league so yeah, yeah just premier league not even series a yeah so just the finals yeah. of a premier league to fox sport um on foxtel or ko so yeah. I'm, I'm sure you've got a few this is details. really exciting yeah this is, this crazy. is incredible actually europeans as well 
So the European Championships is being broadcasted on Fox Sports More. Fox, yeah, Fox Sports More, which is awesome, a continental championships. I've never really, like I've watched a couple of finals from Europeans, but not many. And I don't think it was like fully televised. So I'm really looking forward to that whenever that is. So that it's such an incredible yeah. deal for Australian karate people, right? I think with the Kaizen culture, we've always talked about the accessibility to see superstars and like make people your heroes, like your sporting heroes. Mm. And watching on YouTube's always felt a bit clunky to me. So I think it's like awesome that there's now that opportunity for kids to be like, oh, cool, karate's on. I do that. Mm. And then you get to see like these superstars and start to really engage with the sport. Um, I think tons of people have KO these days. So it's yeah. so much easier to just turn on the TV, go to Fox Sports more and watch karate instead of the whole it's playing around the same, with open YouTube. And... I'm a bit of a millennial. YouTube's a bit confusing. <laughs> <laughs> well, it can be confusing. The streaming, the connecting to the Chromecast, like it's a bit much, yeah. right? These oh, days yeah. I've got Pe- 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 on there all the time and Minecraft videos for my daughter. So. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, but... So, And we should feel quite privileged as well because the WKF uh, for Antalya, we were one of five tv broadcasting networks who did the event five which is just insane so there was one in in france uh sport in france which i assume is quite a uh, fox sports equivalent and then we had what was the other one s snrt which i believe is a middle eastern tv broadcasting network they did a lot of different countries in the middle east but yeah, one of five, which is just insane. Massive. And I believe it was, well, from what I've heard, the rumours that were going around the street is that it was quite a seamless sort of transition to be able to make a deal with Fox Network. Like it, there wasn't quite a lot of resistance from both WKF and that, well, obviously WKF, that it's great for them to have that sort of coverage. But from Fox Sports, I believe that wasn't, wasn't yeah. too tough, which is really good to say. Yeah, I think um, the viewership is is the best part about this, and that the accessibility side of it is is really important to to our audience. Um, I I always think about like because the next step is now making the elimination rounds available on Fox, right? That's that's just going to be a process of getting the stream better. I don't know if that's ever going to happen. I mean, that's the whole day, isn't it? Yeah, I know. But what sport do you say on maybe. Fox Sports for the whole day? Yeah, maybe probably. that is a viewership thing in terms of if the finals go really well, well mm. that they'd consider that yeah well next is bronze medals well or, yeah bronze yeah. medals and then maybe with the premier league you could do like quarterfinals and semis because yeah. it's just like it's two fights for a division you know yeah but um i think i i always think like now maybe does it does this snowball into something else now like because it's so easy to watch now on on fox and and ko does this allow opportunities for sponsors to jump on board for athletes you know, like let's say we have some Aussie athletes that are pushing finals and and getting to that spot, and we can say, hey, it's going to be on Fox, it's going to be on Ko. Um, your brand or your company will be shown on this this event. Do you nationally. think we could ever get to the point where, well, because obviously WKF's made a deal, Karate Australia aren't in that deal, but obviously they're benefited. Right. Could we get a nationals TV broadcasted on Fox? I mean, like, if we scheduled nationals, uh, I think we've done this one year, and I absolutely loved it. I'm all for this, saving the finals till the last day or a, a specific time slot and just doing all the finals of all the events in a row. Mm. Could we, elimination rounds, let's not worry about TV broadcasting, but have a period of, like, three, four hours where it's just finals, TV broadcast it, would Fox Sports be interested in that? I mean, it's an, an Australian competition. It's a national, it's an international competition. International? Australian Openers. Yeah. Oh, oh, Australian oh, Australian Open. Open. Sorry. Oh, oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. I was talking about nationals, wasn't I? <laughs> nationals or Australian Open. Okay, either right. one of them. Probably nationals is the yeah, way to start this. So national competition. Would they be interested? I mean, is that in the future of Australian karate? For sure. I think so. I hope so. You can do it. You got your steps process. Your your, your yeah, step yeah, by step true. process. This, this, step, what, this, step two? this is <laughs> this no, is, this is, not I think this is like the seventh step, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> maybe it's making it worth it for athletes. Maybe that's this is which I, is step one. Definitely, I think anyone listening <laughs> to this definitely try and like tune in and watch that mm. for yourself, but also to support this new 
new option that there is and hopefully it stays around and it keeps growing yeah we're going to be pushing it heaps yeah. jump onto fox sports jump onto ko and then i love the passive effect of having it on ko because i don't know have you guys had ko I or love you KO. have ko yeah. yeah i like ko yeah ko is fantastic do you ever just like flick around the mm. random sports and just say oh i just want to watch something that i've never watched before and yeah. you enjoy it yeah curling <laughs> curling yeah, exactly <laughs> have you watched curling like at the Olympics and yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. a very good impression. So you get get to watch a completely new sport and maybe you really enjoy it. Yeah. So the fact of being on KO, I love that. You mm-hmm. get a really good passive audience from that. Sweet. Um, well, I think as the events roll around and there's more exposure on Fox and maybe we'll hear some more news about it or you know, new opportunities. I think that's just going to grow. Uh, but yeah, we'll, we'll just keep an eye on that and keep sh- being sure to plug that. Yeah. Um, I want one more, one more probe as well. Oh yeah. Um, for, for the WKF, just a props to the WKF doing this sort of stuff. So last year they made a deal with Grupp Media. Mm-hmm. I believe it's a Spanish based media company, but they cover a lot of sports in Europe. Namingly, Right, this is just insane. They've had they played a part in the coverage of the UEFA Champions League, the FIFA World Cup, um, FIBA, the Pan American Games, Arab Games, African Cup of Nations, Formula One, uh, Golf TV, La Liga TV, One Soccer in Canada. I've never heard of that, but fantastic, like huge competitions. And WKF for making a deal with such a media group. I don't know if it's come into effect yet. I, they're probably still in the planning stages of what the future of media and WKF karate is going to look like. But this is exciting stuff. And we've never been in this time period where this sort of stuff is happening. It's really stars aligning for Australian karate, international karate, just karate in general. Yeah, it's sick, hey? I, I remember the times when we – I actually remember trying to stream – or they, they had this thing where they – um, were buy, um, selling a package to to watch the World Championships. Do you remember this time, like maybe 2014, 2016 World Championships, you could buy it and I remember Dad and I, we bought it and it was like so exciting and we could try and put it on this like website and you could stream it and, and it just didn't work. And we got <laughs> so angry because we paid so much money for it and it just didn't work. I don't know if anyone else had the same experience for the World Championships, but there was a time with that and it was only like what? Not that long ago, 10 years ago. Yeah. See, my maths was good then. Sometimes you got to like, you, that was the first step maybe to getting to Fox Sports, right? You have to do the one that didn't work and <laughs> yeah. everyone's frustrated, but it's so good that they seem to be going step by step and heading in the right direction with media coverage and attention. And mm. Well, yeah. this is it. It's just like our sport is so amazing. We just need to, like people need to see it. And so this is a, a, a great direction that we're heading in. It's pretty exciting. Yeah, And it's never going to be the best the first time you do it. No like this podcast <laughs> yeah, we no, only recorded 30 minutes oh my a, gosh on we're, video, so. we're getting better we're getting better um, exactly so yeah that was the the last couple of weeks and of uh, the events overseas and um the new deal with fox sports but um i think now i'd really love to hear some insights about your experiences and what we all wish we knew uh before competing on the international stage so i know nathan and i have had some pretty eventful stories and uh, muck ups, <laughs> yeah, muck ups. That's an understatement. Yeah. Um, but uh, John, you you've done heaps of events. Before. Yeah, let's start chronologically. Eh? Chronologically. Yeah. <laughs> Back in two thousand. Back in two thousand. <laughs> Is that right? Two thousand eleven. No, probably like um, one of my fondest trips was went to Europe with with a team, but we did the the German Open, stayed for a week and did. I think we were just. Take a little short break for one second. Sorry, John. I think we're having some technical issues. So um, just hold Cut me off. That's fine. I'll cut you off. (laughs) Uh, But yeah, pin that and then we'll come back. All right. Okay. So, you know, you went around listening to what was just going on in this room here. We are struggling technically here. (laughs) But it's going to change. I bought a new camera. Okay. 
recently for the for the packages. Quick plug. Yep. Um, packages. Yeah. That's, that's gonna what be, are those, Nathan? Uh, <laughs> that's going to be coming out for Oz Open, and yep. that's going to be really exciting because the second time I've done it, I'm only going to get better at it. Mm. Um, third time, I'm well, fourth time, I'm, fifth time, I'm doing. God, I've done a lot of photography and karate now. Wow. <laughs> yeah, professional. Fifth, yeah, fifth proper tournament that I'm going to do. So bought a new camera for that, but. That's later. Let's yeah. hear, hear think, from John. We really did cut him off. Yeah. So. yeah. But I think just really quickly with the packages, um, to be the first to know about it, it's going to be sent out to the email list. So to find out about the packages, it's all about the email list. So um, now we can let John continue his story. 2011, set the scene. Yeah, 2011. Um, this young whippersnapper. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I'd done a couple of international tournaments and then – like Oceanas and things like that. But 2011, I was in the under 21s and there was a group going to the German Open, a really big tournament. And that was fantastic. Like what a trip. But then it was the probably the only trip where I stayed on, a few of us stayed on and we went to Prague and we competed in the Pilsen Open, wow. um, which was still a big tournament. There was, I had a look at the, the medal tally mainly because I did medal in that tournament. Oh, but, um, there's so many countries, but German Open, I went, lost first round to a great competitor. And that's a, that was a good experience. But it felt really good going to a tournament that was probably a bit more my speed. Still getting that international experience, lots of different countries, but you get the confidence of going through a few rounds. I was lucky enough to medal, yeah. which always feels good. But it was really good doing both. And I think I learned a lot from that is that it's great going to... Back then, you could go to K1s. I wasn't in the top, you know, 32. But you, you could go to the Premier Leagues. It was great touching those tournaments and being there. But if your eyes are on developing long term, not just experiencing the highest short term, then I think you really need to, like, maybe judge what tournament is your level. You don't want to go and be the absolute best and s smash everyone and not learn anything. But where are you a medal chance or a chance to get through a few rounds mm -hmm. to build up speed? and get yourself to the right level. Right. So did you think that maybe – how did you pick that tournament? Did the team just say we're going here and you're going there? I'm pretty sure that the team put it together and said, hey, there's a whole bunch coming and if you want, we'll send some people also mm. to – So it was like a blind faith kind of thing? To that, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, so it was – it was. I think it was organised by the AKF. So right. they did say, look, the, the German Open were coming, there's this coach is going – and I think the coaches also went to the Pilsen one. Um, but not everyone did both from memory. Mm. Um, it's quite a commitment, but in some ways it's like if you've already spent that money to get there, if you can just find the extra seven days or whatever it is to hang in Europe, it's mm. really hard. Um, you get to see Prague, like what well, a city. tough, right? So tough. But <laughs> hit, hitting a couple of tournaments when you go to these events, or and I've not done so much of this, but making connections to like train with someone like make something extra from the experience give yourself an, another opportunity to get something out of a trip because they're expensive they're hard to go to very often mm. so that's probably what my biggest learning is try and find the right level tournaments do a mix of levels so you can build confidence and get more out of the trip more karate yep. out of it and that's exactly what we want to talk about going forward is we, we talk about these k1 league tournaments all the time but the international opens that is a, a stepping stone that you have to make to go to the international stage because it is very high level at the series a's and the premier leagues and the youth leagues as well so if you compare it with a solid international open it's invaluable as you said and do people know what the good international opens are to go to when you're at a specific level you know, I mean, we've we've done Ishodge, we've done, uh, well, you've done the Luxembourg, Luxembourg Open, we did Austrian Open. All of these are just international opens. They're different levels, but they're all very valuable in their own way. And it depends on what level you're at to how much you're going to get out of a specific tournament. Mm. Yeah, no, it's, um, it's tough because, like, you need to, like, know, not need to, but it helps if you know someone that goes, hey, like, this is a good tournament to go to, like, Oftentimes I'll just message people that I've met overseas and be like, let's say from Sweden being like, what's this Swedish open like? And they're like, nah, like don't do this or do this, you know? So that's tough because that relies on 
making connections and friends and, and talking. But yeah, imagine the, imagine going to one of those Swedish opens that they've said no, don't go to. Yeah. Spending that much money to get yourself over there and then realizing I'm way above these guys. I'm not learning anything. Yeah. Like this is just a local comp. Yep. That has been on sports data because there is there are every, local comps that are comp. on sport data. So. Every single comp that's run. So um yeah we'll, we'll find a way to to bring that bring that knowledge to the people. But um that's I think that's a great takeaway is doing a back to back comp, one that's like a you know trying to push yourself and test yourself at the best level and then the other one that you're like a bit more comfortable and you can you know try and push for a medal i think that's a great combination it's wicked but um yeah with the team though that's that must have been sick two weeks yeah it's great with the team um little anecdote but the best food i ever had on a trip was in germany yeah. and we were just in this really family-run hotel and i think it was like the mom and the dad owned the hotel and home cooking but that's, that's so probably sick. my biggest memory <laughs> on the trip the potato soup <laughs> take me back <laughs> <laughs> well uh, well, I don't think Nathan has a potato soup story. No. Um, but I have a feeling you're going to say, like, what you're going to say. Yeah, because uh, it's very embarrassing and it's embarrassing for you as story. well. Yeah, it's oh. a very embarrassing so story. So I think this was, yeah, this was when we were, we came from England. We started in England. Oh. We started in London and we made the boat trip over to Liège. It was a big trip for us, you know. The ferry First ride. time traveling just to us France, two. Right? Sorry? To France. To Belgium. to Belgium. Oh, Belgium. Yeah, okay. to Belgium, to, yeah, Liège. And we were going for the Champions Dojo. I don't know if it was Gym an actual Dojo. camp. Yeah. It was a camp. Yeah, we were going for a week before the camp, weren't we? To train. We were training with just Junior, and then we were going to do the camp with Junior. And we were, we were all packed up. We had these brand new Sierra, Sierra? Yeah. High Sierra. High yeah. Sierra suitcases. You could put your karate stuff in the bottom and then put the rest of your stuff up the top. It was fantastic. Really love those bags. You still use yours? Yeah, I still use it. I actually yeah. use it for my uh, whatever. It doesn't yeah, matter. Yeah, <laughs> fantastic bag. Um, it, it's important about the bag yeah. because okay. we went to Liège and it, it was a bus from the ferry to Liège. It was like a seven-hour, eight-hour. Yeah, it was an overnight bus. We were ruined from the, the trip. We were tired. So we went to sleep and then all of a sudden – uh, the other thing, I think the bus driver didn't have the best English. So it was also sort of hard to understand what he was saying. And we we knew that we were going to Liège. We didn't know what the bus stop was called, but it was something about Liège. And there was a sign that said Liège. So we were asleep, completely asleep. And we hear something about Liège. And we both like sort of startled, like woke up. And we're like, is this is, is this our stop? Is this, is, is this where we need to get off? And we decided, okay, yes, it is ran to the bus driver and said, is this the edge? He's like, yes. And then we get off and we, we grab all our stuff from the from the chairs that we were sitting at because, you know, we, we don't want to forget it. anything, you know. Take it all off the bus, walk off the bus. Oh, this train station, amazing. The architecture, first time like really properly traveling Europe. I was just like, we were starstruck and we'd just woken up having a look at this thing. It's like, man, we're here. And I think we hugged at one point. Yeah. We were just like, we're, we're, we're really <laughs> starting this trip. This was a good like four month trip we were doing. So it was the mm. really, it was the start of it. And we we're really excited. And then I think 10 minutes go by of us just chatting. You know, this is going like, to be amazing. The train station, mm. fantastic. Should we go explore? Oh, no, let's, let's just get settled in. Look behind us. The bus is gone. Oh, that, no, that's fine. What? We've oh. got all our stuff. Okay. Except our high Sierra bags, a big <laughs> suitcase with all our karate stuff, all our clothes, everything. We have literally like one. Both of you? Yeah. Both of us. Because yeah. it's yeah. in the undercarriage, right? You know, you have to lift up that, that section of the bus and it's underneath. It's usually how it works. <laughs> <laughs> the bus driver did get out. You're not traveling Europe with a backpack, guys. <laughs> We just woken up. Have you seen the shin pads you guys have to wear? John, our parents were so disappointed. Yeah, <laughs> they wanted to kill us. <laughs> Did you ever get the high Sierra bags? Back? We ended up chasing information from the the bus company for the next like week. We said to Junior, we, "We're here. We don't have any gloves or geese <laughs> or clothes." <laughs> So, we ended up, I think it was like three days. I can imagine yeah. Junior was impressed by that. Oh, 
He was so good, actually. He let us train a couple of days before the camp and after the camp. But, yeah, that was horrible. Three days of stress. Oh, man. We were – and we were young. Like, we were young. We were 19, though. So, like, these Australians trying to travel Europe. But it just goes to show that if you're over there and you're an athlete, it's so hard to get everything under control, know exactly what you're doing and not make any mistakes and then compete. Yeah. So – Having that organisation support is huge for athletes and parents is a huge um, weight to burden. So national when, when the National Federation gets involved, it's fantastic. And as you said, John, like how much did you have to worry? Well, not about keeping your bags, I'm sure. You're, you're pretty <laughs> I'm good a very organised person. <laughs> yeah, but just the whole trip was quite organised, yeah, and it yeah, was really good. Memory. Yeah, from yeah. It does make a difference. I was still with Dad as well, you know. Even <laughs> Yeah, true. Oh, Richard Stainer. No well, one's forgetting anything when my dad's around. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so I think the the main thing is like trying to communicate as much as you can with the people that are going. I think that's what we, we really tried to drive over the last few years is we realised that we're going to be doing these things on our own. There are a couple of different other Aussies going. Well, why don't we just make it our own little group and communicate with each other? So, you know, whoever's going, is it even like that now. So whenever we go to a, a Premier League and – who's going and the three of us are, may not be staying in the same place, but, you know, we, we get together, we communicate on, on messenger and we let each other know what we're doing. Some people like to do a training session or two. So it's like, if you want to come to do this training session, we're going to do it together. Um, we're going to go to registration at the same time. We just really try and be a team as much as we can within ourselves. So I think that's the biggest thing that we or I've learned over the last few years is, is just getting together with the teammates that are already going because, you know, we need as much help as we can, you know. Clearly. Yeah, <laughs> especially especially us two. <laughs> well, in that way, if there's, like, someone new and it's their first time, they're yeah. joining guys like you who've left the bags and made the mistake already. <laughs> yeah. And hopefully it doesn't get done a second time. Yeah, I mean, before we didn't have a, a medium to share this sort of experience and, and show other people, all right, what can go wrong? Mm. What stops do you need to put in place to ensure that everything runs smoothly? Less about the bags. I think generally people are pretty good with their yeah. luggage. Um, but, I mean, it can get lost in flights, all of that sort of those stories, but especially registration. I mean, I remember Paris... Um, going there and the registration was crazy. Like there were heaps of people and you have time slots and th- there's a language barrier. So having that information before you go, other people's insights into that experience, that's what we really need to share and, and start pushing. So I think if you are going like, and you want to know something about it, like just message us. Like I'm actually so happy to answer anyone's questions or if you want to just send me a message or send the Kaizen culture, a message be like, Hey, like I'm going overseas. Like, can you give me a hand with something? Like we're, we're more than happy to help out and just have a friendly chat just to make it feel a little bit more comfortable. Yeah. Even if you're orientating yourself around a specific tournament and you say, Oh, I think I could probably stay like another week or so. Do you know of any tournaments that are happening in that area that are high quality? We can help you out for sure. Cause we, we've been there and we've done that. Sweet. Well, this one was a bit of a longer episode today. Um, it felt longer for us with all the technical difficulties. <laughs> felt very long. I'm but, very late for work, but yeah. priorities, guys. Yeah, priorities. Exactly, exactly. Um, Did your boss listen to the podcast? Oh, thank God, no. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine? Because I'm pretty sure I'm going to say that my car broke down. I'm not that liar. <laughs> good, good point to wrap it up. Um, but yeah, as always, let us know your feedback. You know, send us an email. If you have any questions, please let us know. We've been loving the engagement, so just just keep it up, and we're, we're trying our best to answer all the questions. Um, you know, after all, we're an organization for you guys, so um, we'll try our best to answer everyone. Um, send us an email at kaizenculture.info at gmail.com and sign up to the mailing list to hear about all of the things that we're doing this year, kaizenculture.org. And uh, thank you so much, boys, for a lovely, lovely chat. It's been wicked. It's been a great way to wake up. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, tune in to the next one in, in two weeks' time. We'll finish with our theme music this time. We won't forget it. What is our next episode? Oh, our next episode? Yeah. It's in two weeks. And what's it about? Got to plan it. You'll find out in two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Stay tuned. <laughs> Watch the space.